Hi and welcome to the next tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking parallax effect using Adobe Photoshop. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that I have here is I've downloaded a picture from Unsplash and this is in portrait mode so what I need to do is I need to get it into a landscape mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and just click on new and I'm just going to create a 1920 by 1080 pixel document and I'm going to click on create. Then I'm going to come over here and copy my original image and then just paste it into here. I'm going to hit control T on my keyboard for free transform and I'm just going to bring this up and then just position it to how I actually like it. So once you're happy with your photo composition, I then I'm just going to press enter and now I can actually start to worry about cutting out the different kinds of sections. So the first thing that I need is I need five sections for the five of the different parts of this of this photo here. So we've got one set of rocks over here, another over here, another over here, and we'll bundle those two together plus the sky. So I'm just going to come over here and duplicate this five times. I then I'm going to hold Alt and press on the I just to select that layer. Then I'm going to come over here to the quick selection tool. I'm going to set my brush size and I, I can do this by pressing the brackets keys. So once I'm happy with my brush size, I can then zoom in and then I can just click away to select that entire section. Now if you go over any of these parts, you can always hold alt to kind of deselect certain parts. Anyways. Then what you need to do is you can come over here to the select and mask tool and you, if you want to smooth it out you can add a bit of smoothness to it or you can increase the edge detection but for this you know purpose I think it's done a really good job so I'm just going to press OK. And then what I need to do is I just need to come over here and just press on this layer mask tool. So once I've done that you can see how it's nicely cut out that rock section. So what I need to do now is I need to right click convert that to a smart object and I might as well rename it since I'm here. So I'm just going to call this first rock. So now I'm just going to select the second part of this mountain and once I've done that then I just need to come over here, add layer mask, right click, convert to smart object and then I'm good. So I do, I'll do the same process again for the four different sets of mountains. So now once you've completed all of that and you have each of these different you know, elements in a different layer and you've made them all smart objects, we then can come over here to our timeline and we can convert this into a video timeline. Now if you don't have that, you need to go to Windows and then you need to go to Timeline down here. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a video timeline and once we've done that, you can see that you have all these settings uh, that you can work with. So what we are going to do is we are just going to open up the first rock. We're going to click on transform and then what we are going to be doing is we're going to move to the end of the playhead which is going to be 5 seconds. Then I'm going to press control T and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scale this up a little bit. So maybe something like that. And then when you're done just press enter. And now you can see you've got really nice motion happening to your image. Now that's probably a bit much so what we are going to do is we're just going to come back and just uh, scale it down slightly. Now if there are any, any problems like this over here it doesn't matter because we're going to fix up the sky a little bit later on. So what you want to do is the things that are closer to the camera or to the front of the screen should move the most and the things that are in the distance should move the least. So we're going to repeat that process again for the second rock. I'm going to open it up, click on transform and then move forward in time and then I'm going to just bring it up slightly. So a little bit less than the first one and so now you can see that they both are moving at the same time. So it's looking pretty cool. So we're going to repeat that process again for the third rock and this one will be even less. So we're just going to go to the end. Control T. I'm just going to bring it up slightly like that. 
And so now you've got all of those things moving and it's looking really, really good. So the final rock, again, we're going to transform that. Just make sure we're on the first layer. And then I'm just going to bring it up and just try and cover any, you know, errors or anything. So you just, you can't see any gaps. So I've done that now. And so now you can see that that's working nicely. But you can see when we're here that it's just got a little bit of space that we need to fill in. So I'm just going to make that slightly bigger just so it fits nicely in there. And there we go. And now finally for the sky, what we need to do is we're just going to come over here and I'm just going to just going to press control T on the sky and I'm just going to enlarge that a little bit like that. So we have a bit of space to move and actually animate with. So I'm just going to even bring it up even more so there are no gaps anywhere. And then I'm just going to do the same process again. So I'll come over here to the sky and I'll just hit transform and then move it to the end. And then all I'm going to do is just move it across. So something like that. So now when you play that all back together, you can see that the mountains are moving and this is moving and the sky is moving across and it's looking really, really good. So the final thing that we need to do for this is we just need to save this as an MP4. So all we need to do is come over here to file. We can go to export and we can go to render video. So once you've rendered your video, you can take it to After Effects if you want to do some more manipulation to it. But anyways, guys, that's about it. Thanks for watching this simple video. I hope you learned something and I will see you guys next time.